Oh. oh, you should really put some cold water in there. Um, set your alarm for 7.15. Giving advice is something we all do from time to time. It's a way to help a friend or family member to find a solution to a problem. And this can be so helpful in the right circumstances. However, as we saw at the beginning of this video, giving advice can also quite easily be impolite, offensive, or just really annoying if it's not given at the right time or said in the right way. When giving advice, you should avoid giving someone an instruction. Get some new shoes. It is rude to tell somebody what to do, especially when they've not asked for your opinion. In Britain, we have a certain standard of manners and politeness, and this is obvious in the words and sentence structures that we use to give advice. We don't like to be too direct. So let's learn a different and more polite way using the second conditional. If you're not sure how to use the second conditional, I have a whole video about that, which I'll link in the description below. So a key phrase you can use to give advice is, if I were you. This is a phrase that suggests that you are putting yourself into another person's shoes. It's a British idiom which means to imagine that you're that person and to try and think as if you are in the same position as them. When we use the word if, it shows that it's not true and that this is a hypothetical situation. So if something is hypothetical, it's not real but it's being used to discuss the outcome of a situation which hasn't happened or could not happen. Anyway, <laughs> we're going down a rabbit hole. In this case, you cannot become another person, but you are thinking about what you would do if you could become that person. So, if I were you. As always, with the second conditional, we then place a comma before the new clause and then describe what you would do in the past simple tense using the verb would. And then the base form of the main verb. Cool. Here's an example, it will make it clearer. If I were you, I would break up with him. If I were you, comma, I would break up with him. The reason this feels more polite is because it's less direct. Rather than saying, you must do this, you must break up with him, or you should do this. Instead, you're saying, this is what I would do. And then allowing that person to decide if that would be best for them too. You can also switch these clauses around. So if I were you, I'd wait would become, I'd wait if I were you. After you've said your first sentence using second conditional to explain what you would do, you can then use the present tense to explain why. Ooh. Mm. Um, if I were you, I'd put some cold water in there. It'll be too hot otherwise. Thanks. That's a great idea. I'd get some new shoes if I were you. You're running a lot at the moment and they don't look very comfortable. Yeah, I've been thinking about that too, thanks. If I were you, I'd wake up at 7.15. You might miss the traffic if you leave a little earlier than usual. That's a good idea, but I already get there early, so I think it's fine. Thanks, love. <laughs> do you see how rather than telling someone what to do, by suggesting that you would do something in a certain way and explaining why, it comes across as far more polite and helpful. Now, it's your turn to give some advice. I'm going to give you three different scenarios and I'd like you to write out the advice that you could give to a friend with that problem in the comments. You can be as creative as you like and you can create your own details too to make your answer more in depth. 
So the first scenario is, your friend is at university, they have an essay due in three days, and they've not even started yet because they find the subject very difficult. What advice would you give them? The second scenario, your friend has been offered a new job. The new job pays much less than their old job, but it is with a much nicer company. Hmm. What advice would you give them? The final scenario is your friend is cooking dinner for their new boyfriend or girlfriend's parents. <gasps> they don't know what to cook and they're feeling very nervous. <laughs> what advice would you give them? I can't wait to read your advice in the comments and to see your new English skills being put to good use. If you have a spare few minutes, then why not come and join me in another lesson? Otherwise, I will see you some other time. Take care. Bye.